Okay, so nothing too fascinating here. So let's go ahead and we're going to set up a ground plane so that we can see the shadows being cast. So if I use the shortcut Alt W, I will minimize the perspective view. And I'm looking at this in a top view. I can go ahead and just create a box that will work as my ground plane. So here in 3ds Max, I'll click on box. I'll zoom out and I'll go ahead and create a box so it's length width and when I release my mouse button it's setting up the height and I can always go to modify and look at the size of that I'm gonna make the the height negative one foot and I see in my front viewport that it's at the origin at zero so I'm gonna click on move and just drop that down near the bottom of that surface. I'll rename it. I'll call it ground. And I'm going to apply a material to that. So I'm going to bring up the material editor. And I haven't gotten that friendly yet with the slate material editor, so I'm going to go over to the compact material editor and I don't trust any of the materials that are in here by default because I didn't make them and they could cause large rendering times so I'm going to go ahead and click in the first slot and click on get material and I'm going to go with arc and design because this is a mental ray material and I'll just rename it ground and what you need to know about arc and design materials is that they always have by default some reflectivity and glossiness so for this ground I'm gonna set those both to zero okay my ground is selected so I'll click on the third button assign material to selection and I'll make sure that perspective viewport is current go ahead and click on the teapot and now we have our shadows being cast so this component comes into 3ds max from Revit with two materials on it, one for the solid area and one for the glass. So let's go ahead and change both of those materials. So I'm going to click on the second slot in the material editor and I'm going to use this little eyedropper, pick material from object. I'll click on that and then I'll click on the object in the perspective viewport. And it brings in that material from Revit gives it the name of the family by default and then you see here we have the two materials that were applied for the sake of rendering time and also the look of it I change this glass to the mental ray glass so I go ahead and click on it and instead of autodesk glazing I click on that and I choose arc and design and under select the template I choose glass thin geometry which will render much faster okay so the glass is set up now let's go back to the opaque material which is also an Autodesk generic material I'm gonna click on Autodesk generic and change it to arc and design and I'm gonna set this up to be a metal material and reflectivity and glossiness for metal it's a little bit too reflective and glossy to begin with so I'm going to set these both to point 5 and I could get a better look at this if I I double click on it make it larger give it a background and we start to see some reflectivity and glossiness on this I could increase the reflectivity a bit 
Okay, so we'll go with that for our, our metal. Um, let's go ahead and brighten that up a little bit. Okay, so the, this is already applied to our geometry. And if I click on the middle teapot, it brings up my last rendering. And I like to clone this when I make changes so I can compare the changes, put these side by side. And I'll go ahead and use the F9 key. F9 in 3ds Max is render last. Okay, so we can see the image on the left is better. It has the lighter metal, a little more specular quality to it, and the glass itself has a little less transparency, so we can actually pick that up and also see it in the shadows. Okay, so I'm going to show you a trick just to define the edges of this panel a little bit more. So I'm going to use the shortcut M to bring up the material editor and I can see my material for my panel. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to scroll down under special effects and I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to check on round corners and the scale of my objects is, is relatively large so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to Set this to five feet and see what that looks like. And I'll clone my last rendering. And I'll use my F9 shortcut. And we're starting to see some definition on the edges of these panels. This little soft works much like a bump map and get a little specular also on that okay so this is looking pretty good and really the last thing to talk about here in 3ds max is creating a camera and I guess there's one other thing which is talking about output and what pixel count would be good to render this out at so let's first go ahead and create a camera and we can do that in a top view by going to create cameras choose target and I'm going to make more of an eye level camera so I'm going to click here in my lower left and drag out now something you need to know is that when you bring in a camera from Revit it is set up with clipping planes so the next camera that you make in 3ds Max will also have those clipping planes so I'm just creating a camera as I normally would and I'm going to go over here in the command panel to modify and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to uncheck clip manually you see that's this red diagonal line here and you also see it here in the left viewport so I'm going to uncheck clip clip manually and it shows uh, my full camera so it turns the clipping off I'm also going to go ahead and change it to a wide angle camera so I'm going to choose 24 millimeter and I'll right click in the lower view press in the C on the keyboard C is the shortcut for camera and it will change to that camera view now something else that happens because I brought in a camera from Revit is my orthographic projection is turned on so it kills the perspective of this camera so I'm going to uncheck orthographic projection okay so now I'm getting more of a of a perspective view and if I look in a front viewport 
it created it at a zero Z height so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this camera down uh, more to eye level okay so let's go ahead and render this out so I'll use F9 which is render last and you see a sky which is coming in here from Revit So in terms of output, I want to go ahead and click on my first teapot, which is render setup. And everything seems to be rendering OK here. A lot of times when you're bringing in nerves geometry from Rhino, you want to click on force two-sided. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that so it renders both the front and the back sides of a face. And here under width and height is where I can set my output size. And these are set in pixels so by default it was pretty low res 640 by 480 pixel I'm gonna click on my lock to lock the proportions of this to 1.33 and pretty much could get away with 2000 pixels for rendering output I would say that's the lowest value if you have faster computer and you have more time you can start to increase from that but I would say that would be the lowest pixel output you should go with is 2000 pixels and that's going to take a little bit longer to render out so I'm going to hit the render button here and that's going to go ahead and render out and it's actually showing it smaller on my screen right now because of the video that I'm creating is, is set at a low resolution I can zoom into this and see it render. Let's just get to a point where we actually see it rendering out. So right now it's just creating the final gather. And it's going ahead and rendering and we start to see some of that final geometry being rendered out. So that's it for output.